Hello, everyone. My guest today is Anna Mohan. She is building a customer support software for collaborative teams. She's an entrepreneur, cyclist, and aspiring writer, and she's a proud transgender woman, pronouns she and her, and lives in Barcelona with her two cats. Anna, you ready to take us to the top? Uh, yeah, yes. And one of my cats right there as well. I see. It looks very comfortable back there on that chair. Yeah, he's having a good good time. Yeah. Very good. All right. So, so tell us about Support B. Is it a SaaS platform? And if so, uh, walk us through some of the backstory. When did you launch? Yes, Support B is a SaaS software for customer support. And we launched publicly in 2012. And then a couple of years before that, we started work on it. So I'd say somewhere in 2011 is when we started working on it and launched it late 2012. And who is we? Uh, I started with my co-founder, Nitya, and uh, she still works with us. Uh, she's doing customer support and customer success. Okay, very cool. And where did you guys come up with this idea? Were you doing support inside of another company or how did you come about? Um, so it's interesting. Nitya and I, before support, we had another business called Musibu. It was a music sharing platform, sort of like SoundCloud, but more community focused like Flickr. And uh, while we were doing that, we had over half a million users and we... We're using Gmail to do customer support, but it sort of like lacked a few collaboration features. And then every software we tried back then was pretty complex. So we sort of just wanted like an upgraded Gmail experience. And and then once we were looking for new ideas because we wanted to move to software as a service, uh, this is what we started working on. That's fascinating. And and are you playing sort of the SMB mid-marker enterprise space in terms of average price point? Um, we are actually in SMB. I think we have uh, tried to go up market because the temptation is always to go up market. And we found ourselves in that sort of struggle for a few years. And starting this year, we are like, you know, doubling down on our focus to be small and medium sized. Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean in terms of uh, what's the average customer pay per month, would you say? Um, so they pay about $100 a month. Okay. And what do they get for that usually? Are you a seat-based model or do you upsell based off something else? It is else? a seat-based model, yes. We experimented actually with um, with a ticket volume-based model. And while we thought it was great and a lot of our customers thought it was great, we found out that people really uh, tend to overestimate the ticket volume. So they tend to be much more uh, aware of how many people are going to be versus how many tickets they're going to have. So we finally switched over to a um, to an Asian-based seat your seat based model, yes. yes. Yep. Okay. So, so, get, if, so I'd say about five seats, you know. Okay. Five, five seats for a hundred bucks. Yeah, five, five seven, seven. Because we have okay. two years. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And and you know, obviously getting the first ten customers is the hardest part, right? So you're writing some code in 2010, 2011. you're officially launching in twenty twelve. Take me back to that moment when you landed the first customer. Who was it? Um, so we um back then we were one of the first customer support software to have like a sort of a Gmail, like single page, um, you know, no page refreshes, um, that sort of a, uh, interface. And it was pretty fairly new back then to be building those things. This is like five years before React and all of the buzz. So I used to write a lot of blog posts about these things and post it on Hacker News. And that's how we started finding some of our early customers, to be honest. Interesting. Um, and- but interestingly, uh, our very first customer, paying customer, we had some people use us for about a year before we started rolling out payments. And our very first paying customer is a company called Drills and Cutters. And they did exactly what the name is. They sell drills and cutters online. And they're still using us, so like a fairly non-technical team. So I'm not quite sure how they landed on Support B, uh, but they were the first ones to actually start paying. That's interesting. And they, do they, I mean, do they tell you how they found you? Was it through Hacker News? I can't remember. It might have been, I think we, I experimented with like putting up pages for Zendesk alternative. And so I think it might have been one of those things. They definitely weren't the first people to use support B, but they were the very first ones to pay. Okay. So first, so this is first ones to pay back in 2012, 2013. How many customers do you have now today? Uh, we have about 450. 450. Okay. And what does that mean in terms of how much revenue you're doing each month? So it's about 45,000 a month. Some of them are on annual, some of them are on monthly, but that's the average. This is impressive. So 450 customers, hundred bucks a month, 45 grand in monthly recurring revenue. And have you done this on, have you done this all bootstrapped? Yes, actually we've never raised any money. 
I love this. I love this. So, so difficult to do. And where, where's home base? Where's headquarters? Uh, so we are incorporated in the U.S. as a C Corp, as a Delaware C Corp, but uh, we don't have an office anymore. We didn't have an office for a while. Then we had for a couple of years in Bangalore because I think we had this phase where we thought, okay, we should be in Bangalore. We should raise some money and, you know, we should hire all the talent we can. But I think very soon I realized I can't really do it. It's um, I don't think I can be in a super busy tech ecosystem. <laughs> all right. So where I mean, where are you sitting right now? So I'm in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, My uh, co-founder, she's in San Diego in the U.S. Uh, I have a couple of new team members in Barcelona that just came on board. And then I have have one developer in in India. He's been doing our backend stuff and then one in Bolivia. So we've been remote, fully remote since 2015. And even before that, we had a strong remote ethic. So what does that mean? So I just adding up the numbers, how many people total are on the team and how many of those are engineers? Um, so two engineers, um, then my co-founder who's doing customer support and success. Um, I, I basically just keep the whole thing running, um, in terms of the business and trying to think about growth. And we've just added one person who's coming on board for growth. So we have two people who are sort of ramping up from being freelancers to coming on full time. So I'd say four people full time and then two people who are transitioning from part time to full time. Okay, got it. So I mean you're I mean, four people and forty five thousand dollars a month, that's a revenue per employee of almost ten thousand bucks a month, which is really I mean, it's impressive for an early stage SaaS okay. company. Yeah, I mean it's super impressive. So I mean that must mean you guys are extremely profitable. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, we can all uh, pay ourselves a good salary. We have been saving some money to invest in growth, which is why we can this year, at least we now we are planning to sort of, um, you know, invest a bit more in marketing. We have, to our own detriment, we have never really invested anything in marketing. We've never had a sales team. And um, it's it's great that we got so far, but I think we, we sort of want to shake things up a bit now. Well, so how have you done all this without marketing, a sales team? I mean, you have 450 customers. How did you get your second, you know, three, you know, 449 after the first one? Well, obviously, I mean, as you understand SaaS pretty well, uh, we actually got a lot more, but then some of them churned out. Um, we have, um, I think we just have a good sort of search presence, organic search presence. Uh, we have some integrations. We are listed on Basecamp, on Asana. So we have get some, but truly, really, to be honest, I think, uh, I personally think we can do a lot better, but it's all been organic so far. Yeah, I mean, and one I of the things that yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, one of the things I found interesting when I look up support B on Ahrefs, my go to tool for anything SEO, you guys have an incredible domain authority, right? It's pretty high domain rate at 72. Uh, however, you only get about 2000 organic clicks from search every month, which is really low for a website yeah. that has that much authority, which tells me there's a massive opportunity there. But you currently rank for about 2900 keywords which keyword right now is bringing you the most trials and customers would you say i'd say um it's fairly distributed um i'd say it's um perhaps um some variant of ticketing system like support ticketing system ticketing system something like that so i think this is what i've kind of learned over the years like painfully so is uh there's a difference between like having pages for you know, things like ticketing system or knowledge-based software versus like just generating a lot more content, um, which like targets a lot of long tail. And that's the opportunity you're talking about. So now we started doing that. Now traffic has grown quite a bit, but, you know, I think we have to work on converting them to trials. And so that's what we are working on now. You rank extremely high for a competitive keyword, support ticket software. In fact, that brings you almost 50 organic clicks a month. I think it would be more, but it's 50 a month. Maybe the reason it's so low is because so many people are spending ads on the keyword I'm seeing right now. Freshdesk, exactly. Zendesk, yeah. Kayako, and Talkdesk all pay for that keyword. You're number one organic and you're beating HubSpot and Zendesk and others. How did you beat those guys in the organic rankings? I think we just have... Um Well, I wish I could tell you exactly the formula, but I think we have just done like sensible stuff, always have a, you know, a site that loads fast, Uh, never done any gray hat, black hat sort of thing. And um, the keyword that surprises me is actually uh, shared, like best shared inbox or shared inbox. They're even more competitive in some ways uh, that we rank up for. So I'd say just like doing the most sensible things, like good linking structure, things like sort of like Google's web starter, SEO starter guide 101 things, but just done consistently over time. 
Yeah, you all, my favorite post you guys did was, uh, and it ranks for the keyword, email response to angry customer examples. Customers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that does really well for you guys. Okay. So that actually SEO, is one of our top form of performing content right now. Right now. Yeah. yeah. So SEO was part of your strategy, but take me behind the hood a little bit here. In a given month, how many new trials will you sign up and how many convert to paid typically? I think we sign up about, uh, and this number has stayed fairly constant, um, which is what we want to grow now. It's about 120 a month. Trials? Yes, leads, trials, people who sign up for the 14-day trial, yeah. Okay, and how many of those at the end of 14 days convert usually? I'd say about 10%, so like 12 to 15, something like that, yeah. So you're growing MRR by between 1,200 and maybe 2,000 per month, something like that. Well, I wish, but we also do see some churn. So at least in the last six months, we've sort of been a little flat, to be honest. What is yeah. churn look like? Maybe on an annual or monthly basis, what's revenue churn? So on a monthly basis, the revenue churn looks about 25 to 3%. And I think the lower churn is about similar, 3-ish percent. Okay. So sort of 30% annualized. Yeah. Okay. Which I think for the, uh, yeah, for the segment that we are in, we, I think it can be improved, but Probably there's better places to invest in energy in right now. That's what I believe. Yeah. Now, do you, I mean, churn's fine, especially if you get like your CAC paid back instantly, right? Your economics make sense. It sounds like you're not doing a lot of paid stuff, but there are other forms of CAC. What was what your total CAC right now, would you say, to acquire a $100 month customer? I really wish I had that number. I don't because even content is so new for us. Now we're investing like a certain amount in producing content every month, but we really haven't nailed down that funnel. Uh, we started, we really started, uh, we haven't started uh, trying to like, for example, uh, a great example of that is we only have one action that you can take, which is to sign up for a trial. You you can't really sign up for even a newsletter or, so I think like once we put that in place and we measure it, maybe in a year from now, I'd have a better answer. So. Yeah. I mean, early stage SaaS, the best way to calculate CAC is to take everyone who's not an engineer. So anyone focused on marketing, product sales, take all your salaries monthly and then divide that by number of new customers you're getting each month. <laughs> right. Well, so so then, <laughs> yeah, right. Paying customers. So, yeah. Paying customers. So I would say, yeah, I, I'd say in that case, let's say um, it'd be about... Um, like four hundred dollars or something, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So what? No more than that. So yeah. what you're saying is you spend about five to six thousand on salaries of people focused on product and marketing. That divided by twelve gives you. Uh, sorry, that divided by. Uh, well, I mean, if I just take the marketing cost, let's say the content cost, because I do think customer support or success is an integral part of. But yeah, uh, so I didn't exclude that to be honest. Okay. Okay. Okay, got it. So a four hundred dollar CAC, and you're getting twelve new customers a month, right? So you're basically you're saying you spend about five grand a month, right? If you had to calculate it on on CAC, yeah, yeah, we are pretty good at this. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So five thousand. Okay, that interesting. Okay, so that, so that makes sense. Uh, the economics obviously makes sense there. So, so what's the next? I mean, what's the next move? I mean, how do you guys go from four hundred fifty customers to a thousand? Well, I think, um, like I said earlier in the interview, um, this year we sort of want to double down on our uh, positioning for the small businesses, the small businesses that actually want to invest in their customer experience. And uh, so we are sort of doing like a brand overhaul uh, because uh, we are obviously in a very crowded space. And if you if you visit most software, it's kind of hard to have... Um, like unless you try everything out as as a very um, as sort of an average consumer, it's hard to sort of know which one is for you. So I think like we we're trying to be a little bit more polarizing. That if you fit into our perfect market segment, then you find us really attractive. And if not, then you probably you know you think that you know we're not that great. But either ways, I think be a little bit more. So with with our like and in fact, those are some of the people working with us part time. So like a much much more vibrant colors, so much much uh, the copy written in a way that appeals to the smaller businesses, uh, things like that. So I'd say just sort of like focusing on some of that and then like continuing to produce more content, um, investing a little bit more into customer success. So it's not just about doubling the customer base, but also reaching out to some of the people who churn out because maybe they couldn't figure out the product, things like that. So all of that sort of put together and maybe taking a more long-term approach, to be honest. And before you make a bunch of these moves, I mean, historically, what's the company grown at over the past 12 months? What was revenue 12 months ago? 
So we did do some upgrades for some old customers and and that helped us grow a bit in the last 12 months. So I'd say about 30% or so. Okay, got it. So you were doing call like $38,000, $39,000 a month about a year ago. A year ago, yeah. yeah. And in order to drive this brand overhaul and maybe make some critical key hires, I mean, would you consider raising capital or no? Not at the moment because I think I'm pretty, uh, I think unlike 10 years back now, I know what story sort of you need to sell. Um, So not at the moment. But let I'm, I'm curious to see how things pan out in the next 12 months. And uh, based on that, if we need to, then yes. But All I right. do want to consider like, you know, probably, re- sorry to cut you off, but like revenue-based financing, other other options too. Like as we get a better sense of our CAC, we start investing a bit more into, uh, you know, paid advertising, at least retargeting, things like that. I definitely don't want to rule out revenue-based financing. Yeah, there's a, I mean, look, I launched a side project, a calculator to figure out if you wanted to raise debt, how much you could raise at founderpath.com. And we are seeing incredible demand of SaaS entrepreneurs who are bootstrapped using it to, to do exactly this, f- fuel their growth. It's not revenue based financing. It's, it's term. It's, it's a f- fixed interest rate, but same, same, same idea. Right. All right, Anna, yeah. let's wrap up with your famous five here. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, I'd say it's not exactly a business book, but it's a book called Brain at Work, Your Brain at Work, which really helps you understand how to use your brain more effectively. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, I actually don't follow a particular CEO. I try to be more inspired by people around me. So people running restaurants, people doing great art, things like that. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Hmm. Uh, At the moment, it's Notion. Notion. Yeah. Number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? I uh, sleep well. I get about uh, seven to eight hours. Okay, good. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Uh, No, I'm single. Okay. No. Okay. And uh, uh, let me see here. Single, no kiddos. And um, do you mind sharing how old you are today? Uh, I'm 37. 37. Okay. So the reason I asked that is take us back 17 years. What's something you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, Um. uh, that's a great question. Well, I'd um, I'd just I'd say broaden your horizons. You know, um, just meet a lot of different kinds of people, look into a lot of different kind of things, get more plugged into the world you are living in. Guys, there you have it. Support B. First lines of code in 2011, first customer 2012, some early hacker news support. Now supporting over 450 teams as they manage their support tickets and their inbound customer complaints. They're each paying about 100 bucks per month. So $45,000 a month in revenue with a team of five. High revenue per employee. She's totally bootstrapped. Anna, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you so much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.